Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while since I made the last theoretical video here and tonight's topic will be very, very uh, cutting edge. Uh, hope you're gonna like it. Actually, I'm sure you will because I got like more than five requests like Maya, please do something against first move d4. We want something uh, not that known uh, without much theory at the same time very interesting with a lot of interesting options and I'm about to show you one uh, almost forgotten not that much played but in my opinion very fun gambit uh, but right be before that I just want to let you know about one thing I'm actually noticed uh, that I all the uh, donations that I've got here those were donations of 25 euros uh, well, we'll fix that amount uh, here uh, that was accidentally put there uh, in that amount. And basically, I would be happier if I got like five donations of uh, five euros or five dollars by some guys. Uh, so I can see like a big number of you actually watch these videos and like them than to get like one donation. Of course, uh, I'm very actually happy and I'm very... Um, uh, of course thankful for to all of you who send those donations you're going to be able to uh, see the last three guys who came up with donations in the end of the video and i just want to encourage you to do more because don't forget there is one guy uh, who's actually editing these videos and who's helping uh, everything to be in order and to be uh, in time uh, once I uh, make these videos and when I want to publish them out. So thank you so much for that. And once again, let's make the thing uh, short. You can make uh, as donations, uh, you know, like as much as you like. So it's your choice. Thank you so much for that. And thank you everyone for their donations so far. Like I previously said, uh, Fire of each Gambit is highly fun, interesting and creative opening. Uh, you can consider playing this opening uh, if you want to uh, play something uh, very forgotten. Uh, it's not like one of those variations where there is like a clear refutation by white. It's considered maybe not to, to be a suspicious opening by black, but I have to be honest and to say I don't even think uh, like that. Uh, I even know a couple of GMs uh, used to play this opening with, you know, with black pieces and their results are pretty good. I used to play this in Blitz and my results are really, really top. So uh, let's get started and let me just show you how do we reach this opening. D4, Knight F6, C4, E5, D takes Knight E4. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of you are just familiar with the Budapest Gambit, Knight G4. There are like so many videos, articles, books about this one. But nobody covers this Knight E4, Fajrovich Gambit. Uh, best players of this variation are famous Karl Richter. Uh, the guy who made like more than 50 amazing games uh, for black here. Uh, Grandmaster Romero Holmes from Spain, uh, Grandmaster Stuart Conquest, uh, Belan Lopez, uh, an interesting player of this opening, Garcia Castro, and of course, uh, that's not a great player, but this is just going to be a great benefit to this variation. It's going to be this video. So, just like I used to say, fasten your seat belts and let's go. 94. Uh, of all the moves possible here, and there are like more than 10 different ideas for white, I once again have to say there is no like clear refutation of this line and there is no like clear conclusion which variation is like the best for white. The best one is A3 and we're gonna cover as usual the best move uh, like the last one. Let's just check all possible things. By the way, for all of you who are just on beginner's level, uh, they can't play f3 because you have simple queen h4 
And of course, king can move nowhere else but here. And then you take on g3. But it's not enough. I'll show you what is like important accuracy by white and what is like way important than uh, going with this straight queen h4 and knight takes g3. After f3, you should involve uh, bishop b4 check. Usually in these variations on fire each gambit, this bishop b4 intermediary move is very important in terms of getting decent position. Here, bishop b4 is played to cover the d2 square. And you're probably wondering why. Because when you play queen h4, g3, knight g3, when they take, you have to take the rook. Because if you take the pawn, king can escape on d2. So watch this out. There is an escaping square d2 for this king. But if you play bishop b4 check first, and if you force them to put a bishop here, now when you go with the queen h4, g3, and when you take on g3, they simply can't take on g3 because we won't take the rook, but we'll take on g3 and deliver checkmate. Or if after knight g3 they play bishop before, we go with the knight e4 and once again checkmate. So in both of these cases, uh, bishop before was such an important accuracy by black in order to take d2 square away uh, for this king on e1 so it can't escape. So after it's a terrible blunder by white, but believe it or not, I faced it a couple of times by weaker players. Uh, knight c3 is just a bad move. I highly suspect that anyone will play that against you. Uh, of course, you should be taking on c3 and create like terrible pawns. They have isolated pawn on a2. They have like pair of double weak pawns on c3 and c4. And they have e2 and e5 also double pawns. Uh, you should be going with knight c6, knight f3 and queen e7. Uh, why do I call in the beginning of this lecture this variation highly creative and uh, uh, opening with a lot of fun? Because you can play queen e7. And afterwards, when they defend this pawn, go with h6 to play g5, followed by bishop g7. So when they play h4 to stop g5, you go g6. And when you play that, you want to go bishop g7 and uh, capture the pawn back on e5. So when they play queen d5, you play bishop g7. And uh, there is a classic plan for black in fire of each gambit. b6, bishop b7, long castle, rook h to e8, and eventually you should take this pawn on e5 and uh, just thanks to a little bit better pawn structure, uh, get like uh, more prosperous uh, middle game for black. Although, uh, instead of queen e7, you can have fun and play d6. Who cares about the pawns here? Look at his pawns. a2, c3, c4, all these pawns are just bad. So uh, when they play like he takes d6, bishop d6, uh, it's very characteristic for this variation that you can always sack pawn like this in order to get like the full activity of your pieces. It's not uh, too common in this type of game. Here, I would rather go with queen e7 and get a pawn with h6, g5 and bishop g7 or just g6, bishop g7 and b6, bishop b7 castles and rook e8. Uh, but I'm saying you don't have to follow uh, like a very concrete analysis like in other variations you can just have fun and play all these type of moves like d6 and so on. then there is a line like queen d4 queen d4 i've uh, seen a couple of games you once again go with this developing intermediary move bishop before so if they go of course they have to play knight e2 but if they play bishop d2 you capture and play knight c6 with a Thempi developing this knight and, uh, of course, uh, threatening pawn on e5 and queen. So when the queen moves, you play castles. And now you want to play rook e8, getting the pawn back. You want to play f6, opening the f file, taking advantage of the weak king. You want to play d6. Uh, you have, like, so many interesting possibilities and options. That's why I say you have to be good tactician if you want to play this line. But at the same time, keep my uh, words in mind. You also have to be highly creative. Uh, after queen d4, bishop before they go knight d2. 
And when they go knight e2, you play knight takes d2, bishop d2, knight c6, of course, once again. You take on d2 and capture the pawn back on e5. Position is equal and black is without any problems. Apart from queen d4, they can also go with a move like e3. Uh, I haven't seen this move too many times. But of course, there are like few ways of trading this e3 move. First of all, you can make typical pawn second play d6. So when they take, you can capture by, by bishop. And by the way, here you have for the first time in this lecture, uh, we're about to see one of the most typical tactical tricks of this uh, uh, variation. It's uh, knight f2 followed by bishop g3. But the problem is they have some king e2 in that case, bishop g4, knight f3, and things are getting messy and complicated. But what I'm actually telling you, you don't have to learn these variations by heart. Learn the ideas. And just because of this, one of the, one of the main ideas is d6. So let's sack the pawn, let's develop this bishop, and let's get our pieces closer to the center and the king's side and create some sort of initiative. I want to play queen e7 or queen f6. I want to develop my light square bishop on f5 or g4. I want to make short or long castle and I have compensation. That's what I like about this opening. Every single game you can play like different type of variations. Uh, also after e3, apart from d6, which is quite a typical reaction, you can play knight c6, knight f3, and of course when you play d6 it's just transposition into the same. But just like we've previously seen, you can include this bishop before check. So when they play like knight e2, to play knight c6, knight f3, and to go queen e7. Objectively speaking, of all the previously seen um, variations, Probably this one is like the most solid for black. So when they play bishop e2, you get a pawn back immediately. Take on f3, and there we go. For all of you who want to practice, for example, how to raise uh, an initiative, uh, for example, you can stop the video and ask yourself, what should you do here in order to get some sort of initiative playing black? Well, uh, if you took enough time, uh, you could have realized that the move should be a5 using the rook lifting, rook a6 and rook g6. A beautiful idea. But I just have to uh, remind all of you guys who actually uh, like to play the Budapest Gambit or you're simply familiar with this gambit, that this variation and this idea with a5, rook a6 and rook g6 is borrowed from that opening. Anyways, when they play like knight d4 to play some, I don't know, just going towards the center to play f3 or to bishop f3, you just go with castles. And when they play that f3 and king h1 in order to play e4, you just go d5, opening your light square bishop and breaking in the center. Black is without any problems. And we've already seen like all these moves, f3, knight c3, queen d4, e3, and there is one more move, uh, it's queen d5. I remember this uh, move was played by Karpov in one of the games. Uh, Karpov won that game, of course. He threatened this knight. And of course, there are once again two type of reactions. For example, uh, you can play knight c5 and you can play bishop b4. Once again, uh, probably objectively speaking, bishop b4 is a bit better. Uh, but I also like knight c5. I like to play in my blitz games and to move my knight back on c5. And if they ever chase it away with b4, I can always end up on e6. Because having my knight in the center on e6 is quite a good thing here. Because knight on e6 just controls the center and stands very, very uh, properly uh, there. So after knight c5, uh, they can go with b4, you go knight e6. For the first time, we threaten to take that pawn on b4. They play a3, undermine the pawn with a5. They play b5, sack the pawn in order to get the activity. Also, you're not only getting activity of this bishop, but also want to play knight e7. Bishop e2, knight e7, e3, c6. I like this game. By the way, for the first time in this lecture, 
I'm showing you again of probably uh, the guru of this opening, the guy who actually came up with all the most important ideas for the fire of each gambit. His name is Karl Richter. Richter was playing in the uh, mid of 30s in the uh, last uh, uh, century and his creativity and his ideas for these openings were simply uh, amazing. So uh, look at this one. For example, he sacrifices the pawn in order to open the b-file, goes with the bishop b7, jump with one knight and gets like full activity of his pieces. <coughs> so even though black is down the pawn, black has upper hands here. If queen d1, which actually happened in the game between Early and Richter, Richter got the pawn back, played e4, and this is how he uh, kind of got some space. First of all, that knight can always go towards d3. Second thing, when he played e4, which was a very uh, important uh, move in uh, chasing this white pieces away and getting some important squares for his knights, uh, he also continued with bishop e7, queen c7, castles, and he sacrificed pawn. When this guy captured pawn, Richter played f5, pushed that pawn to f4, and look at this. This looks like a very sad position for white after just um, 18 moves. e4, bishop c5, taking control of the dark squares, rook d8, placing the rook on the open file, queen d6, threatening that bishop, and went with the bishop f2. After, if king f2, of course, queen c5, and you win the queen. Um, of course, bishop d4, knight d4, they just lose a piece. King f1, you go queen c5, bishop, queen e2, bishop e3, and after a4, threatening bishop a3, queen h5, bishop c1, right there, capture, played knight g5, pinning this knight and hoping for some bishop g4, and after h4, played this move, bishop g4. And the point is, uh, you can't take by any of the pieces because of the queen and the rook hanging. So after king f2, finally the final move in this game was knight takes f3, g takes f3, and bishop f3 after his opponent resigned. The game itself was very nice, but you don't have to play against queen d5 like this. You can, for example, instead of knight c5, like a very logical move and you can't make mistake ever if you play and if you put your knight on c5. You can play also bishop b4. Bishop b4 is uh, always a nice intermediary logical check. They have to play knight d2 if they want to retain some sort of pressure and tension in the game. If they play bishop d2, it's always fine for us. We give up knight for the bishop. We develop this bishop with a tempi. That's why queen d5 by white is a little bit better than queen d4 in uh, fourth move. And when they play like knight g on f3, you go queen e7, long castles. And now this bishop on d2 is kind of uh, a piece that could find itself in some sort of danger if they play knight b3 and a3. So that's why uh, black should give it up. I I'm just showing you one of the plans. This is just... A plan that you can go for, Fyrovich played like this, so the guy who actually came up with this opening for the first time, and he plays, he played b6. <clears throat> After this, bishop b7, knight c6, bishop c6, he went for a long castle, rook e8, and he just uh, took the pawn back on e5 because f4 literally looks great for black after e takes d6 and e takes d6. So after bishop e2, Fyrovich captured a rook g1, g6, g3, rook d on e8, and he drew his game against Blomich in Leipzig 1930. So just like you see, after like queen d5, bishop b4, uh, they've got nothing serious if they play bishop d2. Not nothing serious. Actually, we can be the ones who can only push and do something there. Knight d2 looks like a more logical uh, continuation, uh, but also knight d2 uh, gives us like more potential to come up with some tactics. So knight c5, they go a3, bishop d2, and bishop d2. And once again, uh, for all of you who just want to uh, play this opening on regular basis or just re 
you know, you just want to find out like the old secrets of this opening, you just have to be ready to find a move here for black. It's b6. It's a beautiful move. Uh, looks like, <clears throat> sorry for my rough voice tonight, it looks like uh, you're just sacking the rook on a8, but that's not a case. Actually, b6 is the top move. I like it so much because uh, you could have seen that in many of these openings, we've got problems if we don't play d6 with a light square bishop. So we want to play b6 and place, place that bishop on b7. By the way, don't worry. They can't take the rook because you have a beautiful tactics, bishop b7. And after queen a7, knight c6, and the lady is gone. So that's why I have to play something else. I play the blitz game bishop g5. I put my queen on c8, queen a7, this one, and I easily won like three or four blitz games like this. It's a very nice trick. It's a very creative one. And uh, I don't know, uh, especially on lower levels, people may think that you just uh, blundered your rook. Let's go with some serious stuff. Now we're just moving to the main lines. And we're going to start that off with queen c2. It's quite a logical move, which leads to normal line, where I'm going to show you one of my rapid games. So uh, I'll show you one of my rapid games. But before that, uh, I just want to uh, show you actually a couple of games played by Richter as well. Once again, you can play bishop b4, you can play knight c5, you can even play d5. Uh, there was a famous game between Rubenstein and Becker here. Uh, so first of all, you can play this crazy move, d5. Uh, for the first time in the, tonight's lecture, we've just seen this idea with d5. Uh, what happens? If they capture uh, by pawn, you play bishop f5. I like this creative way of uh, developing your pieces and getting some activity. It reminds me of the Nordic or just... Danish Gambit. So after d takes c7, queen c7, you threaten knight g3, knight c3, bishop b4, you want to play castles, knight c6, take on c4, fantastic game for black. Richter played a game like this. His opponent played g3. Oops, sorry. After like uh, e takes d6, uh, he went bishop f5, and after like queen a4, went knight c6. Knight f3 and played bishop d6. Beautiful development for black. All four minor pieces are in the center. While they only develop knight on f3. And I don't even want to count this queen on a4 as a good piece. Because we can always chase it away. I'm showing you a game of Richter. His opponent played g3. He played bishop c5 threatening mate in one move. Guy played bishop e 3 in case of e3, I guess just uh, bishop g4 and queen f6. Uh, so after bishop e3, right there played queen f6, developing his queen, threatening on b2, and giving himself like a wide range of possibilities here to make short or long castle. After bishop c5, knight c5, queen a3, queen e7. Uh, I applied this idea in... Uh, my rapid game against international master uh, Vojinovic, uh, where I won in like 15 moves. And I still remember uh, he went for something similar to this one. And they came up with this queen e7, uh, where I was threatening knight e3 check. This was still Richter's game. e3, bishop b1, queen e4, and his opponent resigned. Uh, very nice uh, game. Uh, very, very strong, uh, simply ideas by black, and I really enjoy this stuff. Apart from d5, and e takes d6, uh, what else they can go for? They can go, for example, e3, pretending like they don't react at all. You play knight c6, knight f3, and bishop f5. You always can go with these ideas. Bishop d3, impossible because of knight b4. Uh, they have to move, so because of this, if queen a4, you have a beautiful way to win on the spot playing b5, queen b5 and c6. And now two pieces are hanging. Queen on b5 and bishop on d3. So when I play like queen d1, you play d takes c4. I love it. 
because when they take, you develop your rook. Bishop c4, go with the bishop b4, chase away the light square bishop, and uh, white is literally already lost. In all these variations, somehow uh, the activity of your pieces is very powerful. Uh, here, white cannot play uh, bishop d3 because of rook to d3 and followed by knight f2. White can go with b3 because of knight c4, knight c3, and bishop c3 threatening this rook and threatening almost mate. And this position looks fine. If you don't like approach with d5, because after d5 they can take on d5 and you have to take by queen, but I don't find this any problematic. Queen c7 doesn't seem to be working because of knight c6. And if they play just knight f3, you once again play knight c6, bishop f5, and bishop b4. Uh, if you don't like this approach with d5, you can always put your knight back on c5. I like this move. I highly used it in my blitz uh, games and with really good results. <clears throat> People usually play b4, knight e6, a3, a5, b5, d6. We've had a very similar idea in the beginning of this lecture, uh, once again, uh, Richter's game. Uh, he used to uh, play this plan uh, and go for this plan very often. And here, I just have this nice engine improvement in comparison to his game. Uh, it's move bishop d6. They can't take on d4 because you have some nice tactics. Uh, because of this check and the queen is gone. And on the other hand, uh, when they play like, uh, when they move like this knight, you can always consider uh, taking on f3, continuing to develop your pieces, bishop f5. I wish it worked, but it doesn't. But you can just move your knight to e6 and go to c5. You can take on f3 and play castle. Your position just looks good. And finally, after queen c2, you can go with probably the most logical and pro objectively the best move, as usual. It's bishop e4, knight e2, and d5. Uh, this is how I uh, played a game myself. And when my opponent played a3, that's the rapid game I mentioned, I played bishop f5. Which, by the way, I just want to remind you the fact that in rapid games, you're actually... Um, you should be happy to play systems like this. They can develop, uh, first of all, uh, your creativity to the maximum. And second thing, you enjoy these games. Also, you can just uh, have more fun, but also maybe uh, catch some easier wins against higher rated opponents because it's full of tactics. And if it's your day and not theirs, you can hope for some wins. Queen f4, knight c6, rook d1, castles, and black already looks great in a game like this, almost winning. That's all about the queen c2 move. And I believe it's time for knight d2. Knight d2 is very commonly played against me. We can uh, go and try to equalize with the bishop before a3. Give up the bishop. I usually like and prefer to give up my knight for the bishop. But okay, here if we have to give it up, then just play b6 and after bishop b7 try to support this knight on e4. Uh, it's quite an annoying knight for uh, weaker players because uh, they feel kind of bothered by existing knight on e4 and they always want to do something with it but you guys know that they can ever play f3 because of queen h4. So it's a nice thing. Of course you can go back with the knight knight c5, knight g and f3, knight c6 and when they go with g3 I very much like d6. After e takes, bishop takes. Uh, Richter played two games uh, like this with queen d6, bishop g2, bishop f5, short castles, long castles, a3 to play before, and queen f6. Almost paralyzing white in his developing actions. Uh, by the way, keep in mind they can play for, they can play b4, they can't move this rook to b1. Uh, this bishop is kind of blocked, knight here, and queen. I like style of black's game here. I like black's position. I can go with a crazy h4, h5 and h4 and launch the attack. 
But I also like bishop d6. And after bishop g2, queen f6. I also play like a couple of times like this. Then I develop my bishop. Knight b3, play castle. Knight c5, bishop c5, queen a4 to defend on c4, bishop g4. To be able to put both of your rooks on the open files. Knight g5, rook a to e8, knight e4, rook e4, and I'm just showing you game between uh, Barca and Halleck, played back to 1937, a beautifully uh, played game by Black, and I really have to say this was a top class game after Bishop F2. Beautiful tactics, beautiful game, and Black managed to win afterwards. Uh, if you think that you might have some problems with knight d2, knight c5, knight g and f3, knight c6 and d6, you don't have to play like this. But in my opinion, d6 uh, is just removing this pawn on e5 that I kind of feel like a bone in my throat. So, so I just want to uh, get rid of it and somehow carry on with my logical development. And finally, we're just left... Uh, to check like two main moves, knight f3 and a3. Uh, theory says a3. Interesting enough, surfing through the web and through the chess base, uh, this turned out to be the most successful move for white. Even Mama Jarov and some other top players went for it, playing white against Fajarovic. All together, with many other ideas, it certainly prevents bishop before by black and significantly cuts black's counter chances you can't play that famous and always good and uh, useful bishop before but you go with either d6 knight c6 or i'll show you the idea of b6 so what's the point uh, classic idea is d6 and uh, one of the main ideas for the uh, complete opening here uh, comes now so all of you guys who want to practice tactics Let's go. Stop the video and find tactics. It's knight f2. It's one of the most typical tactics in this variation. It's like a bomb in white's position. They have to take it. You go bishop g3 and you win the queen on d1. That's the most typical tactics in Fajarovic Gambit. When you play d6, um, one option is to go with this move. Uh, but the problem after d6 is move queen c2. You can't play bishop f5. Simply they go knight c3. And when you think I'm happy because I'm threatening queen and rook, this variation turns out to be very bad for black after e4. So in my opinion, after queen c2, you have to play d5. It's a little bit bizarre to play uh, first d6 and the very next move to go d5. But in my opinion, this continuation could save the whole variation. And this move could be the key point in getting uh, counter chances versus fairly dangerous a 3 4 move. Apart from this d6, you can also play knight c6, knight f3 and d6. I don't even want to discuss about these positions. You're not threatening to play famous knight f2 followed by bishop g3. That's a very nice trick, and you should never forget about it. And I had a game, not one, but 20 games where people played like this, and they actually even helped me, because when they play king f2, when I take on g3, I even take the pawn and then take on d1. Uh, that's another option. In case they play e3 instead of g3, you go bishop f5, you go queen f6, and I'm showing you game of Richter. When this guy played bishop e2, he went long castle, threatening discovered check. Queen a4, played rook h to e8, going with uh, pawn storm on the king's side. And when this guy went for castles, g5, king b8, supporting this game, playing queen e5, threatening h2, and after g3, playing bishop f5, threatening bishop c5. Uh, complete domination, and the real tactics is coming right now. Once again, this is for like advanced chess players. Uh, stop the video and find the tactics. It's knight d4. This knight on d4 threatens bishop, wants to go bishop c2, chasing away this queen. And after e takes, queen takes, 
threatening rook, sacking the rook for uh, this uh, bishop, and he just resigned because he couldn't play like this because of queen e2. Beautifully played back to 1940 by once again Karl Richter. So just like you see, I'm a little bit uh, like obsessed with his games and he's like the real guru of this opening, but in modern circumstances, I saw that Sir Conquest played like two games and won both. Uh, Romero Holmes from Spain uh, likes to use this opening, but just like I said, there is a guy uh, whose name is uh, Garcia Castro who, uh, and Belon Lopez. So mainly these Spanish guys, they have really, really nice results with it. And after a3, you have my favorite option. So d6 is classic. Uh, knight c6 is classic followed by d6, but you have this b6. Many of your opponents might think, well, this guy just blundered the knight. No, that's not a case. You have knight c5 and after queen a8, bishop b7 and knight c6 trapping up the queen. So this queen d5 doesn't seem to be working. That's why I have to play knight f3. You play bishop b7, doing the bishop fianchetta and supporting the knight. And when they play like g3, you go bishop c5. It's always good to consider this bishop c5 when they have g3 played. Because when you provoke e3, you kind of weak the light squares in white's camp. Of course, a5 to stop b4, uh, castles, and queen e8. Ideas are f5, d6, knight d7, knight a6 even to go with that knight on c5 eventually. Black looks good. We don't have like anything that's special here. I'd say that we have a pretty nice compensation and our game really, really looks nice. And finally, I just want to uh, show you this move knight f3, which is more like, like, like very uh, classic. And when they play in this variation e3. So how should you play? Uh, so far, we've seen it like so many times. Uh, by now, uh, you should have learned the main idea. Of course, it's d6. E takes, bishop takes. When they play bishop e2, you involve the queen into the game. If they go knight bd2, uh, play knight c5 followed by bishop d3, bishop f5 and knight d3, or you can play bishop f5 immediately. I like Richter's game, who after a3 played queen f6, pinning this rook. Knight b3 captured these knights in order to get a light tempi. Uh, they couldn't take on b7 probably because of short castle and an amazing initiative by black and terrible queen. Of course, queen cannot take because of bishop before this cover check and you win this queen. And after knight c5, a3, queen f6, knight b3 capturing and this guy played c5. Bishop c5, queen c4, bishop f3, castles very much like this one if queen c5, queen f3, bishop g2, knight e5. Knight d3 and queen a6. White resigned because he couldn't save any of um, his position here. Actually, they play two more moves. My fault. King d2, bishop e3, check. And if f takes knight c5, winning the queen. If they go king c2, you play knight b4. If queen takes, you take like this. If pawn takes... No, I apologize. We go with this one and it's me. So... After knight f3, knight c6, in my opinion, a3 is an interesting move because it stops our typical idea with a bishop before. d6, e takes, bishop takes. And I once again have to tell you, don't forget, we're not threatening to take on f2, followed by bishop g3. I played more than 20 games with g3 and bishop g3. Don't forget about this trick, and I'd be very happy if you win your games using this trick in the future. Finally, if queen c2, you just go bishop b4. This is one of those reasons and positions where bishop b4 is uh, allowed. If knight bd2, d5, it's nice. If knight c3, we just go d5. In case they take en passant, you go with a bishop f5 and once again have a beautiful game of your minor pieces. And I really enjoy these games because I like tactics a lot. After e3, castles, bishop d3, you can just play more or less normal type of position where uh, you'll mainly 
uh, try to get a pawn back or to go with some sort of initiative. I was trying to be a little bit faster tonight uh, in order to show you as many games and many tricks as possible. Hope you enjoy them. Just like I previously said, uh, I'm expecting like a big, bigger number of smaller donations. Thank you so much for that. Bye-bye, guys.